Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Alyssa and we are going to be going over what my August TBR list is. Um, it's very large and very extensive. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to be reading every single one of the books that are on this list, but you know, um, I had set myself a goal for earlier in this year to read books that I own and I have been failing miserably on keeping up with that. So um, there are 20 books that I'm going to list off. Um, it's a very extensive list because on one of my apps, Litzy, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, um, one of the one of the lovely ladies on there is hosting a book spin bingo. So I've got my 20 books picked out. Like I said, I'm not necessarily going to be reading them all. <laughs> um, I will hopefully at least be reading at least two of them since um, uh, there's, there's the book spin, then there's the double spin, and then there's the book spin bingo. So the bingo is like the big goal. <laughs> um, but the single spin and the double spin, those are ones that I do want to make sure that I do take part in and read because I'm not big on building TBR lists. I am a very big mood reader. Um, so I've never done well with uh, following through with setting up a potential list of books to read for a month. Um, so let's go ahead and let's dive into what books I picked out for this month. Uh, so up first we have The Immortal Renshai. Uh, it's a story about three brothers who are attempting to figure out their destination. Their, their, not their destinations, their destinies. <laughs> figure out their destinies. There's elven magic. Uh, Midgard is mentioned. When I was flipping through it I saw Valhalla. I saw Freya. So it looks like we're dealing with like kind of some uh, poss possibly some Norse mythology thrown in here. I don't know. Um, but we'll see. It looks fun. I thought the cover was really pretty. I'm really bad for buying books based solely on their covers. <laughs> so this was one where I picked it up. I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it and thinking about it. And then finally I caved in because I was like, I really like this cover. So I don't, We'll, we'll see if I get to it. It sounds interesting. Now that I like actually took the time to read to like re to read the synopsis, it actually sounds kind of interesting. So that might that might actually for sure get picked up. <laughs> uh, next we have The Whispering Swarm. This one I actually picked up because I needed like another dollar something in my shopping cart on Book Outlet. <laughs> So, uh, I did not read the synopsis. It was like a dollar or something. I threw it in the cart and I was like, Meh, there we go. <laughs> um, but I did a quick look on it just now and it seems that our main character, Michael, stumbles upon a hidden world called Alicia. Uh, it takes place like after World War II-ish, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it takes place like after World War II. So it looks like you're gonna get like both like reality plus like a little bit of magic realm so we'll see how that goes if I get to it <laughs> uh, up next we have Mad Merlin this is a King Arthur retelling I have book two so this is first in a series I have book two I still need to try and find book three it's an older series um, it's just another retelling of the King Arthur um, tale as as you can see I have a I have a pretty big love for King Arthur so I have quite a few different very I have I have a few variations in my household right now um always looking for more so if you've know of one you can recommend it uh so hopefully we'll get to Mad Merlin uh after that we have The Princess Beard this is book three in the Tales of Pell series by Delilah S. Dawson and Kevin Hearn um so it's a series that pokes fun at all of your typical fairy tale fantasy tropes. Uh, the first book was it, was, it was good. It was, it was funny, you know, it was, it was all right. Number two was kind of like, meh. Um, so we're going to see what happens with book three. It's definitely the kind of books where the humor 
is either you're gonna be like super enjoy it because it's your kind of humor because it's a lot of like poop jokes <laughs> it's very very it can be at times very immature kind of humor which is which is fine because that's some people's kind of thing I'm more of a, a dad joke kind of gal um so it's definitely either you're either gonna super love it because you find it hilarious or you super hate it because you think it's terrible or you're just gonna be kind of like eh, I has some moments um I know in book two I fell in love with the character Poltro I will attack all the chickens in the world for her I I fell in love with that girl <laughs> uh, she was like the best character in book one in my opinion um so the first book is called To Kill a Farm Boy and the second one is called No Country for Old Gnomes. Um, the Princess Beard, as we can see, like even their titles are a fun, crazy little play on other um, media that's out there. I got some weird looks at me at Barnes & Noble when I went in and asked for it. I was like, hey, I can't find the Princess Beard on the shelf. Can you help me? And they were like, you mean the Princess Bride? And I was like, no, I own the Princess Bride. I, I mean Beard. It's beard. <laughs> so it's definitely, it, it, the, the titles definitely get a fun little laugh out of them. Um, but it's definitely, uh, it's either your kind of humor or it's just not your kind of humor kind of book. So, but also each of the covers are super pretty. The color theory used on them. <sighs> Beautiful. Love it. <laughs> so uh, next we have Warrior of the Wild. Um, this is young adult. I have a rough relationship with young adult books. So <laughs> when I initially bought it, I did not know it was young adult. Um, my sister sent me the link for it and she was like, this sounds like something you would read. And now that I think about it, I did not go and refresh my memory on what this is about. <laughs> it's been like, it's been like a year and a half since I bought it. Uh, so, um, at the time when I read this in Mopsis, I was like, oh yeah, that's something I'd totally read. So I'm pretty sure other people out there who have who are watching this video, you guys have seen the book. So um, hopefully you guys know what it's about. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, up next, we have Daughters of the Storm. Uh, this is, you follow five sisters who are trying to uh, make sure their, their father becomes ill and they're trying to um, help cure him and then trying to make sure that their stepbrother doesn't take over the kingdom and that a whole bunch of family secrets and stuff don't come out that could possibly cause like the kingdom to fail and everything. Um, I picked it up based on the whole sister fact. I have three sisters so I thought it would be kind of interesting to follow a story about five sisters and their vast differences with one another. Like I mean, it, it just, it just really sparked the whole, ooh, sisters thing in me. So that's, that's what this one is. Um, I do have book two. This is book one in the series. I do have book two. The last I heard, no one has heard if book three is going to get released or not. Uh, at least when I was reading like comments on Goodreads, people were like, hey, when's book three going to get released? Because I guess it's a translated book. I'm not really sure. I could have all my information wrong right now, so take take what I say right now with a great assault <laughs> uh, after that we have in my list okay I have two two middle grade books in my list because uh, I do love middle grade books um, I think they have come a long way since when I was a little girl so right here we have Willa of the Wood uh, Willa is a it's a it's a first in a series which I actually just found that out um, she's a night spirit and she's like the best little thief that they have and so she goes to the day the the day side world and she's always stealing things and then she gets hurt and she gets stuck in the day side world and you pretty much follow her journey while she's stuck there in the day world and she finds out you know other kind of secrets and stuff that aren't always like what she was taught to believe in and everything so it sounds interesting the cover is super pretty again like when I picked it up there was a sale so it was it was it was a impulse buy <laughs> it was ooh sale ooh it's pretty <laughs> I have a bad habit for picking up pretty books <laughs> okay I really really do <laughs> so that's what that's what this one is um after that we have a skull sworn so this one I will for sure read because it is 
it's either the double spin or the single spin for the challenge. So this one will for sure get red. Um, this is hopefully as far as I know of, it is 0.5 in the Emperor's Blade series. I have, I actually have the whole trilogy. I have not read it yet. And then I have this one. So I have all four books. Um, but in this one, it's, I believe if I remember correctly, it was like a year ago when I looked this up, uh, this is 0.5 in the series. So you can actually read it before you actually dive into the rest of the trilogy. This introduces you to the character Pyre. Um, I believe that's her name. Yeah. It introduces you to Pyre and she's like, she's a priestess. Um, she's going through the last of her trials, uh, so that I guess she can be, yeah, she has to like pass her final trials. So that's what this is all about. It's just, it sounds interesting. Okay. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Solari. Uh, this was another, I bought it last year. Um, I believe it was like another, for the most part, pretty cheap purchase. <laughs> um, but, uh, it's the first in a series and it is, uh, a combination of Egyptian history with King Lear. And now that I state that, I understand why I had attempted to read King Lear earlier this year, which I never got, which I got like 40 pages into it before I was like, I'm confused. I'm going to set that aside for now and try again later. <laughs> so that's, that's what I remember reading the synopses about, about this one is it's Egyptian history with a bit of King Lear thrown in. So I know very little about Egyptian history and I don't know the story of King Lear. So we'll see how this one goes when I finally get to it. <laughs> Up next, uh, we have King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. And as we can see, I do like Leigh Bardugo. <laughs> I, um, What's funny is I've actually only read her duology for the Six of Crows, so I'm actually going to look and see if I need to first read the Grishaverse trilogy, the Shadow and Bone one. Um, so if you guys have read it, let me know if I should probably read that before I dive into this bad boy, because <laughs> I don't want to spoil myself <laughs> on anything. So if you guys know, let me know um, down in the comments below. So yes, <laughs> leave our go. Then we have Norse mythology. Uh, I love mythology of all kinds. Um, and I love Neil Gaiman. So this was like an automatic, like, I need to have that in my life. And then I haven't read it yet. So um, honestly, I'll more than likely pick up the audiobook to listen to this because he reads his own books. And I absolutely love the way he reads his books. I think he's a phenomenal narrator for his own work. Um, plus I like the, his voice. It's a good voice. <laughs> um, so I'll probably more than likely audiobook this one along while I read it along and everything. So I'm looking forward to this. Gonna see his take on some of the Norse mythology stories. After that we have Once Upon a River. Um, I picked this up thinking it was fantasy and then I found out it wasn't fantasy and then I found out it was fantasy. I don't know what category it actually falls into, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> so, but as far as I know of, it uh, it deals with uh, a guy shows up with a little girl who's like dead, and then by morning she's alive, and everyone's like, "What? How'd that happen? Is it magic? Is it science? How do we explain this?" So. It sounds intriguing. It sounds like it might be a combination of fantasy plus science. It more than likely is. Like I said, I'm not really sure where in the world of anything it falls into. So uh, we'll see. This is going to be a very bit, this is going to be like a surprise kind of story for myself. So we'll see how it goes. Next we have The Blind Knight. This is an older one. I, I have I have an addiction to buying these super duper old mass market paperbacks. Uh, they're just, I love them. But this one is a 
It's another King Arthur related story. It's set in the Arthurian world, the blind knight. Um, I guess the, the knight shows up and he says, hey, I'm a descendant of uh, King Arthur. So yeah, you know. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes. It's pretty short and everything. Um, I'm interested, so I'll see how it goes. <laughs> Uh, next we have Black Feathers, the Black Dawn Volume One. Um, I have Volume Two as well. I found them both. I found them both at Half Price Books. Um, they were like two dollars each, uh, in super good condition, you know. Like, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a post-apocalyptic world where this this boy is trying to locate this figure called the crow man to find out if he is going to be their savior or their destruction. So I, I picked it up for the post-apocalyptic aspect and the idea of the crow man. I was like, Ooh, crows, a crow man, post-apocalyptic worlds. Yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> so that is what we are dealing with in this one. So hopefully I get around to that one. We'll see what happens. Next up, it's another older fantasy, Talion Revenant. Uh, this one, Goodreads had actually recommended to me, and I was like, ooh, that sounds fun, just based off the cover title. <laughs> I am, I'm going to tell you guys now, I am terrible when it comes to reading the synopses of a book. Um, I have a really, really bad habit of picking books up just based on title or cover art. <laughs> so... But this one, um, as far as I know, if you follow the main kid uh, who becomes a justice and he gets partnered to protect the man who murdered his father. And I'm like, oh, uh, so or his family, I think it's yeah, he has to he has to protect the life of a king who slaughtered his family. So <laughs> there's a lot of conflicting ideals going on um so this one sounds fun goodreads was like hey you read all these older these other older fantasy books read this one and i was like okay so i found it and i bought it <laughs> we're almost done we have like five more books like i said this was like 20 books this is a lot <laughs> um next we have cold iron um got this guy in a sale i i liked the cover and I think it was during Barnes and Noble's uh, book. I forget what the sale is called. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm totally blanking on what it's called. Book haul sale. That's what it was. Boom. Got it. <laughs> it is. It was from their book haul sale, and it was the only fantasy book that they had out for it, which I was super mega bummed about. Um, so I went ahead and snagged it. Uh, but basically... Our main character is like he's not good at magic he's not that smart he's not that talented he's really not all that great <laughs> and then he gets then he like makes a decision to help a woman who's being attacked and his whole life changes from there afterwards so I like the idea of following a main character who's just not that great at anything so we'll see how this guy goes it sounds fun Next we have The Vagrant. Uh, this was definitely a cover buy. <laughs> it was a cover buy. And then afterwards, um, someone that I follow did a review on it and I was like, well now I'm even more interested because you have your main character and he is traveling across the land with a special sword, a baby, and a goat. <laughs> and he doesn't talk. <laughs> so I'm like, all of these points are intriguing to me and I need to know how they all fit together in this story. So that is why I picked this one up. I've actually have book two as well. Um, they're printed in different format sizes, which drives me a little crazy, but we'll deal with that later. <laughs> but yes, sounds interesting. Special sword, a baby, a goat, a man who doesn't talk. What could be more intriguing than that? <laughs> Next we have Master Assassins. This 
was again this was just like how the immortal wrench i was i just kept thinking about the cover and i was just like there's just something about that cover that's really intriguing to me um i like i don't know it was just it was super intriguing to me um and i threw it in the the cart and bought it uh this is you follow two brothers who get mistaken for assassinating a important figure and now they're on the run and they got to work together but they don't get along so i'm like ooh brothers who don't get along but now they've gotta get along okay let's do it so we'll see how this one goes um i actually like last year had read like a one chapter and i was like mm, this sounds interesting and then i got distracted and read something else so we'll be starting it over <laughs> next we have the adventures of robin hood uh the penguin a penguin classics version so uh i believe this is also like the kids version maybe possibly it was sold in like the kids department so i'm gonna assume it's the kids variation uh i love the tale of robin hood i it's it's right up there with king arthur i absolutely love and adore it so i love coming across other writers interpretations and other retellings and stuff um so that's basically all this is as far as i know of it's not really a retelling but it's just a reinterpretation so we'll see how it goes see what it's like maybe maybe i'll like it maybe i'll just like meh, meh, it, it's a kids robin hood story we'll see <laughs> but yes uh that one will be fun and then last but not least is blackwing it is the first in a series i have books one and two i do not have three yet um and Honestly, after reading the back of the book and the synopsis, I still don't really have a good grasp of what is supposed to be going on in this book. <laughs> so, um, as far as I know, there's like conspiracies and the our main character, Ryholt, which I like that name by the way, um, teams up with Elizabeth and they're trying to uncover some conspiracies and lies and secrets and it's a, yeah, it's a that that's what that's what i know from it i like i said for whatever reason my mind isn't wrapping itself around like the synopses when i read it and it's like this is what this book is about so if my information isn't good enough for you you're more than welcome to go look it up so i'm sorry i couldn't help more than that um that's what i'm that's sorry i have failed on that one <laughs> So that is all of the books that I have picked out for my August TBR. Like I said, I'm not necessarily for sure going to read all 20 of them. That's a very ambitious goal. Uh, I am aware of that. So we'll see what happens, what I read. I will definitely keep you guys posted and updated. Might do a couple reviews on some of them depending on how they are. So um, I hope you have enjoyed this video and maybe any of these books that might have sounded interesting to you, you can add them to your TBRs. If not, that's fine too. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for tuning in. Bye!